Now that our package of bees has had a day or two to settle in inside their package, what we have to do now is install the bees into the observation hive. This is the package of bees from the bee yard and inside, as you saw, is a queen cage with a queen in her own separate cage. We'll put her in the observation hive separately and then install the bees. Top of the observation hive is a hole with a screen over it that is used as a feeder for the bees to provide supplemental food for them while they're establishing themselves. My plan is to remove the screen that is usually there to prevent the bees from escaping. And um, I have fashioned a funnel of sorts out of a pipe and a bag that would go over the a package of bees, funneling them in through the hole. My big concern at this point is the hole is too small and that the bees might get jammed up. This is new for me and I've never done it in a hive like this. This is the two inch PVC pipe that'll fit in the feeder hole of the observation hive and then the bag will act as the funnel wrapping up and over the package of bees and our hope is that they'll funnel their way into the top of the hive. The queen is carefully removed from the package and as you can see she's placed in the bottom left hand corner of the observation hive. The front of the observation hive is then carefully put back in place with the queen at the bottom. We begin to shake the bees through the top. There was a little complication with the bag kinking, but it worked pretty well. At first the bees stayed at the top, but quickly they made their way down to where the queen was. The screen was placed back on top of the feeder hole, and then the observation hive was carefully moved into the shed and put into place with the exit pipe from the hive matching up with the exit tube, and it's securely screwed into place. As you can see, the queen cage sits there at the bottom. The queen cage, we put a marshmallow in the hole into the cage, which keeps her in there for a full day while the bees eat at that marshmallow to free her. The bees initially cluster at the top, but quickly make their way down to the bottom where they cluster all around her until she's freed. For the period of time that the queen is held captive in that cage, the colony of bees is very dysfunctional. They don't do much, there's no organization, and they just sit clustered. The moment she's freed, they spread out throughout the hive and get to work. This is 36 hours later. The bees are coming and going. They're still trying to figure out the tube. It's a little bit strange for them, but it's fun to watch them and put this in slow motion as you watch them hit the landing pad and come and go from the entrance. As you can see, I've placed an additional feeder just outside the entrance of the hive so they can have access to as much easy food as they can. Their number one task is to draw out the comb and create the cells so the queen can immediately begin laying her eggs. For now, that's really all they want to do. Inside, you can see that they're beginning to figure out the tube. It's a little unusual for them. They're not used to this and they're not sure if they should fly through the tube or walk but in a matter of days, they'll have it completely figured out and it'll be much more orderly as they pass through. Again, it's an amazing thing to sit here and watch them come and go and enter the hive.
Inside the observation hive sits the empty queen cage. You can see they're no longer clustering. Somewhere in this sea of bees is that queen. The bees get to work drawing out the comb. This hive is two frames deep, which means there's a lot of bees between the frames that we can't see. That's not just a front and a back. There's two frames, and so we're only seeing half of the bees. They'll draw out that comb and work and work and work until she can get those first eggs laid. The work is just beginning.